Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good evening. It is the Earthmaster back here on this, uh, well, it's kind of early Thursday morning, just after midnight, my time here, December 14th, 2023, about 12.04 p.m. a.m. Uh, California time. A 1.0, the latest earthquake here on the map. Uh, taking a look at the last 24 hours of earthquake activity, uh, I did see a little bit of movement here off the coast of Oregon into the... Uh, Gorda Ridges out here, seeing a little 3.8 into this little divergent boundary zone. Uh, technically, that should amplify some conditions out here across the southern end of the Cascadia. We'll continue to watch that. Nothing showing up there for now. Uh, some smaller earthquake activity across Mount St. Helens and the Cascades. Uh, as we look down into Southern California here, just a handful of smaller quakes across the region. Really nothing stirring up for now. And I uh, got some movement out here in Texas. And uh, no doubt they're out there in the oil fields where they always take place here outside of Snyder, Texas. And this is just one area, wastewater disposal ponds uh, within full view here of some oil pumping operations. Pretty obvious out there. Uh, backing out and looking at the world view model here, still seeing some movement uh, north of Iceland up here around the Norwegian Sea. Had a couple fives stirring up here earlier. Not for sure if we got any effect here on the uh, volcano up there across the uh, Iceland area. I'm going to double check that real quick with the uh, latest map here. And we got about seven, uh, 17 earthquakes in total, in total out here. Not that big of a deal at all. The Grindavik area not showing anything out here in terms of earthquake movement here in the last 12 hours. So just kind of... Uh, Kind of watching things out there, just a little on the quiet side for now. Uh, a little bit further down south into the northern mid-Atlantic Ridge. Did see some activity. Although this is, uh, goodness, uh, when was this, 12, 13? So this was just a couple hours or so ago in the divergent boundary zones out there. Uh, some smaller activity across the Iceland, or the uh, Iceland, not out in the middle of the Pacific, right? The Big Island Still seeing some shaking going on out here across this area of the um, Kilauea Volcano. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the tilt meter. I'm kind of curious because definitely looks like things are continued to be elevated out there in terms of the uh, earthquake activity. I'm uh, going to go over and check out the tilt meter here real quick and then we'll move on. Not going to make this a super long update video. It is kind of late. I want to jump into bed here. We got finals this week, so I'm kind of racking my brain, staying up late, uh, getting some uh, much-needed educational stuff done. Uh, the past 30 days here still shows us elevated. Um, not uh, seeing anything huge going on, but we're still at that level of uh, inflation, the, the highest level that we've seen here in about five years or so across the Kilauea Summit region. Uh, no signs of an eruption yet, but we'll continue to watch that. We've definitely seen some earthquake activity stirring up out here in the southwest rift zone over here uh, just south of this area of the Kilauea volcano. We'll definitely continue to watch that. Uh, further movement up north into the Gulf of Alaska. One little earthquake here just back building prior to the subduction zone region. 17 kilometers deep. Normally that's a sign there of a... Well, some, some pressure built up in that subduction zone itself. So we'll continue to watch this area, uh, maybe for some larger scale movement. Uh, one earthquake out here south of the Samoa area and east of the Tonga Trench, a 5.0. Of course, we have seen quite a bit of deeper earthquake activity out here in this region. Uh, that earthquake, again, away from the plate boundary. This could be another sign here along this subduction zone of some larger scale potential about ready to take place here in this area. Keep an eye upstream here of the Tonga region. Uh, over here in the Java Trench, got a 4.9 coming in uh, just in the last hour, it looks like, about 56 kilometers deep into the uh, area of, uh, again, the Java Trench. Did see some uh, deeper movement here earlier this morning with the 4.2. Uh, way underneath the Java Sea at about 550 kilometers deep. So keep an eye on this region. Definitely looking at some strain building up here into the subduction zone area itself where we see most of the, of the stress accumulating. 
Uh, the rest of the model out here, let's go ahead and check out the Earthquake 3D globe here. Uh, looks like 3.1 down into the North Island area. A um, little bit of movement up here across areas of, looks like Eastern Afghanistan here. Seeing a little bit of deeper activity here away from the plate boundary, but underneath this mountain range. Uh, and further to the west, a handful of earthquakes out across the Mediterranean for now. Uh, in South America, of course, very typical down there. Quite a few threes and fours stirring up here in the last 24 hours. Uh, overall, just uh, you know, somewhat heightened in some areas. We'll continue to watch this and see how uh, this plays out. We did see uh, a little bit of uh, solar weather uptick. Uh, but I did want to bring up here um, the areas that I may think we uh, might see this eruption take place here across the Kilauea Volcano. Uh, I'm kind of leaning more towards this area down south here. Um, they have seen some uh, older eruptions out here uh, south of the uh, the summit area. Of course, our most recent, uh, one of our most recent ones there back in 2018 was over here away from uh, the summit region. So any of these zones out here can kind of activate some new fissures. And I'm kind of leaning more towards uh, the area potentially down south here or maybe within this zone right here. Doesn't look like historically we have seen uh, any earthquake or uh, any fissure activity here. Uh, these are, uh, again, lava flows from the Kilauea volcano. Uh, but it's very possible we could see this uh, uh, be the next area in terms of uh, new fissure activation there at the Kilauea volcano. Um, far as the uh, space weather activity, uh, like I was mentioning, we were seeing a little bit of uh, aurora activity uh, due to a southward pointing uh, BZ component of the interplanetary magnetic field. Now that allows solar wind stream to amplify even under generally weak conditions as far as the solar wind goes. Uh, so auroras were seen up there across Canada. It looks like right now into Alaska as well. Uh, so just a heads up, if you were outside looking at the uh, potential uh, meteor shower tonight, also, we do have an M-flare coming in, pretty strong M-flare, and it looks as though that is coming off of a, uh, a sunspot region right about here, right? Am I correct? Well, look at this massive prominence out here. That's a beautiful shot of that uh, of the sun in this image. I'm, I'm going to screen capture this real quick before it disappears. That is uh, quite nice looking. But uh, I believe this M flare, uh, which right now it's a M2.3. Let's see what it peaked out at. Looks like an M5.8. Goodness, that's a pretty strong M flare. And I believe it is coming off of the sunspot right here. Uh, looks to be the uh, about the most obvious culprit there. Also showing up right uh, here in this image. Now... Let's see, this is at 2325. So this is an older image uh, prior to even the uh, solar flare popping off. You can kind of see it in this one right here. This is a uh, 0756. Um, so this one, yeah, this one's a little bit more newer uh, with the UTC time because it's about 0812 uh, or so. So this image obviously showing that uh, beautiful massive flare uh, that struck there. Um, I'd kind of like to see what it looks like here on the UV filter ray, though. But this one's like way behind. Not for sure what's going on with that. It's literally about uh, about eight or so hours behind. It looks like so. Thirty five fourteen is the source of that flare, and that has been a region that we've been watching here recently. Um, Let's see here. This one kind of looks like it's uh, older activities, as uh, older image as well. Not for sure what's going on, but the uh, complexity within the sunspot core definitely harbors that potential uh, for some flaring. But it looks as though there's some issues going on right now with the uh, SDO site in terms of the latest imagery. But that is, uh, goodness, crazy looking, right? Um, that is somewhat earth-directed, does have somewhat of an earth-directed component. 
Not for certain though if it's got any ejective or explosive type uh, eruptive activity with it. It was more of an impulsive type event. Um, but we'll watch that, uh, see if we got anything shooting off towards Earth in terms of uh, uh, some CMEs. But goodness, that's a pretty strong flare. And there's the global D-layer absorption map shown there, centered over oh, right around the Indian Ocean or so. Um, pretty uh, pretty significant blackout going on there from that uh, sunspot or that solar flare that we just seen. Um, far as the auroras go, uh, this was somewhat unexpected. So the BZ-BT component sometimes stirs things up and allows the solar wind stream to flow in when uh, it really wasn't forecasted. And that's just that's kind of how it is. It happens on occasion. But it looks like we do have G1 class storming conditions here maybe over the next couple of nights. Uh, that is forecasted there in the three-day geomagnetic forecast. Continue to watch that and uh, see how see how things play out. All right, uh, what else do we have here in terms of weather? I, I keep checking the West Coast out here because we're looking at uh, well some pretty decent uh, precipitation. Still looking at uh, a couple different storms coming in here. Uh, soon towards the weekend and next week uh, first one running in roughly uh, looks like about Sunday into Monday or so not going to see a, a big one but uh, if you look at some of these first models here they're showing uh, upwards about an inch and a half of rain or so across Northern California which was really isn't too bad of a of a uh, total and as you can see as we move on through the uh, week next week and then the next weekend and the following week it looks as though this is going to be a significant weather pattern here for uh, the california area southern california is going to get some uh, decent rainfall uh, pr uh, precipitation accumulation mounts amounts down there as well um, anywhere from five uh, up to seven eight inches it looks like around certain areas around los angeles or so uh, here in Northern California, where I'm at, looks like we may pick up around four to five inches. So I'm, I'm definitely happy about that. That's actually pretty significant, uh, just from a couple different storms out there. And if, if that's the pattern, uh, then uh, hopefully it sticks around for a little bit. I'm very hopeful. And that's just a GFS model. Um, the European model here. This only goes out about to the 24th or so, about uh, 10 days, and that does show. Uh, now, a little bit less for Southern California, but again, some of these storms that are occurring um, after this date will be hitting strictly Southern California. But uh, it looks like we're still getting quite a bit of rain. There's no uh, errors that I'm seeing as far as um, any potential backing off of these systems. Uh, this is uh, going up and up and up in terms of the potential uh, for this storm system coming up. So um, I'm hopeful. I'm definitely hopeful. All right, uh, what else we got here, folks? Anything major going on? A little activity there across the Hot Caves Hawaii station. But uh, for the most part, the seismograph stations there look pretty quiet. And uh, we'll just kind of see how things go throughout the evening. Stay safe out there. We'll chat you guys a little bit later on today because today's technically Thursday, right? Thursday, December 14th. Goodness, midnight. I'm ready for bed. Have a good one, guys. We'll catch you later. <laughs>